Turn to Mark chapter 6. Mark, Mark chapter 6. And I've been preaching the last several weeks, a couple months now, breakthrough. Preaching on breakthrough. And in Mark chapter 6 is um, one of the tales of Jesus feeding the 5,000 men and women. It just mentions 5,000 men. Obviously, there's probably 20 to 30,000. But there's, a, as I was reading this, there's a, there's a principle here that I, th I think that's in this story in regards to breakthrough and, and blessing. One of you know, our, our, Bible, our Bible teachers in school, you know, hermeneutics is the proper, is the science and art of biblical interpretation. Pastor Terry knows hermeneutics. <laughs> You're like, duh, well, you know, that, but, but, they tell you, but they tell you that when, don't allegorize narratives. Don't just start to spiritualize and pull out all these, you know, you get all this weird stuff. But there, so, so the way we say it is there's a principle here. So I'm not going to allegorize the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. I'm not going to go off into, there's a lot of weird tangents, so, you know, teachings about that. But I'm going to, uh, but there's just a principle here. And that I, that I think it'll speak to you in regards to breakthrough. If you know the story, the, Jesus is, is he's teaching the multitudes around the Sea of Galilee. It's, it's evening time. They're hungry. He's been teaching, preaching all day. The disciples come to Jesus. And they say, Jesus, they're hungry. We need to let them go. Send them away. Go, let them go get some, get some food. And Jesus tells the disciples, he says, you feed them. I'm like, well, how are we going to feed them? We don't have anything to feed all this, this mass of humanity. He says, well, go out in the crowds, find, find this, is my, this is just my paraphrase, find, some, find whatever you can get, bring whatever you can get to me. So they go out intermingling around and they, and, they found, and they found five loaves of bread and two fish. All at Sea of Galilee, and you'd think there's better fishermen with 5,000 men. They got two lousy fish. So anyways, he comes back with five loaves, two fishes. They said, here, here you go. What do you expect us to do with these five loaves and two fish? And I want to stop right here and just set this up because they had the loaves, they had the fish, but they saw all the people and, and they saw we have a problem. We have a problem. This isn't enough. And what I want you to see today is that when the disciples saw a problem, or let's say when we see a problem, the Lord sees an opportunity to do the miraculous. When we see a problem, when we see not enough, the Lord sees potential. He sees an opportunity. And He's going to take this opportunity, this is a teaching moment, not just for the disciples, but for all of the masses that are there. And he's going to take this, this moment that he's got and he's going to use it to reveal his glory, to reveal his power, to reveal who he says he, he is. And he's also going to use it to, to give them a lesson on faith, a lesson on trust, a lesson, shall I say, that, that on how to set yourself up for breakthrough, for, for blessing, for multiplication. And today I'm preaching breaking through. Breaking through, you'll see what, I'm, what I mean in just a minute. Verse 41, and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven. He blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled. Verse 41 again, he has the loaves. It says he looked up to heaven. He blessed, he blessed. I want to stop there. He blessed. That word bless in the Greek is the word eulogia. Eulogio. You, the English word, where we get the English word eulogy. It means to speak highly. He blessed. Speak to speak highly. It also has the connotation of, of giving thanks. Giving thanks. Now keep in mind, <laughs> twenty to 30,000 people there He's got five loaves. He's got two fish. He's got people who are hangry. And, and they're waiting to see what's up. And he takes those five loaves. He, he gives thanks. He blesses. He speaks highly. 
And I'm just thinking, if I got 20,000 people that are hungry and I got five loaves and two fish, in that moment, if that's all I got, I'm not giving thanks. (laughs) I'm not speaking too highly about the situation that's put upon me. But remember, we see problem, he sees potential. He sees opportunity. So, and, and, and what he does is he, he blessed. He gave thanks. Even though there wasn't enough to feed the multitude. Notice he was giving thanks for what's not enough. Amen. And this is the first principle that I want you to see today because, because God can't break through for you For me, he can't break through. He can't multiply in our lives until we first learn to bless and give thanks for what little we have, even if it's not enough. Even if it doesn't completely satisfy what we're looking for, our our need, our desires. Number one, the breakthrough begins through our gratefulness in the little things, even when it's not enough. Even when it's not enough. For some of you who are wondering, where's my breakthrough? Where's my breakthrough? Where's my multiplication? Where's my, where's my blessing? Maybe we'll start seeing more blessing in our life when we start thanking God for what little we have instead of complaining about what we don't have and that, and that what I've got is not enough. Maybe that's when we'll start seeing a little, a little multiplication. Giving th- I know I'm jumping the gun on Thanksgiving, but we can give thanks right now, can't we? Somebody says, well, well, I only make minimum wage or $8 an hour. That's not enough to take care of my family. $8 an hour, $9 an hour. See, well, well in, in the kingdom of, uh, here I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, well, eight, eight is more than $0 an hour. Eight times 40 is 320, zero times 40 is zero. (laughs) And I'm just talking about giving thanks, setting yourself up. It it starts with gratefulness. We thank Him for what we've got. That's the first position that we've got to be in. And this principle, this principle though, it goes way beyond because I'm not talking about material today. I'm not talking about money. That's just a little side point. Because this not enough, it goes way beyond the material not enough and i don't know about you but but one of the continual battles that i face talk about carlton being open i'm i'm just going to be open i just want to encourage somebody today i just want to if, if maybe me just opening up blesses somebody that's okay that's okay but i but but a, a continual battle and i know that i'm not alone with, as far as pastoring is the feeling of not being enough. It's a constant battle. And I bet the pastors in here, it's, it, it, God seems to call people that aren't enough. <laughs> what is it with that? But that's just the continual battle. That, that's a struggle. That's a struggle. It's, it's, I'm not enough. I don't measure up. Not enough to do what I'm called to do. Not enough to preach. I don't have what it takes. There's so many preachers that are out there that are just skilled. And, and, and so I sit up here and I bumble around words. I say things. I, I'm like, man, I am so stupid. What did I just say that for? And I'll, I'll put my foot in my mouth and stuff. I'm like, God, I'm a, <laughs> not enough. <laughs> not enough to pastor. It's the feeling of insignificance. It's the feeling of, of being unqualified. I preached a message series four years ago on unqualified. I've told you many times, I've, I've, for those of you who've been here my whole time, four, four and a half, going on four and a half years, I've just questioned God in my, in my times of prayer. I'm like, God, why are you, why are you got me pastoring? <laughs> why are you got me pastoring? God, I, I, and I just keep it real with, with the Lord in our communication. I'm, I'm like, God, I don't like... I don't like the feeling of having people look at me and judge me. You know, because the reality, God, I just don't fit the mold for the typical Bible Belt preacher. 
I'm just not like your typical Bible Belt preacher. And I'm in the hub of the Bible Belt right here in Keystone Heights. The, the Guinness Book of World Records right here, right here. Church. The, the, the churches. All, and God, I, I, I don't know if I, I'm not enough in that town. I'm not enough. I don't like God. And I tell God, I don't like knowing that, that people around the community are talking. I don't like that. I don't like that when, when people don't, they, they don't know my heart. They don't know my love for the Lord. They don't know circumstances. They don't know details. And, and, they're, and, 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 and they're pointing and saying, why is the guy a pastor and he's not even married? I, I don't like that, God. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. God, I don't like to feel like I always have to explain myself. I don't like that. But as I was reading this this week, this blessed me. Because I saw Jesus taking not enough. I saw Jesus taking something that was insignificant, that, that didn't measure up. It wasn't enough to fulfill. It wasn't enough to... And Jesus took that which wasn't enough and he blessed it. He blessed it. And, and, and I was reminded of 2 Corinthians 12, 9, but my grace is more than enough. Amen. Is more than enough. Because it's in my strength. It's, it's, when, it's, it's at your lowest point. It's, it's, my strength is perfected in your weaknesses. In other words, my strength is perfected in your not enough. Amen. My strength is perfected in your insignificance. And you being unqualified. So I can't help but take my not enough. I just found myself this week putting aside the pity party and just giving thanks. I'm not enough and that's okay. Your grace is enough. I give you thanks. I give you praise. Let God be true. Let God be true. God, for some reason, you've still called me even though I'm, I'm, I'm not enough. And I thank God that you've called me to be a blessing to someone else who's not enough. Because maybe someone that's in there not enough can see me becoming vulnerable and still walk it in the victory and the joy of the Lord through my not enough. I'm giving you thanks. I'm giving you thanks. See, that's the blessing. That's the blessing in in the not enough. He blessed it. You know, when he blessed it, though, nothing still happened. <laughs> he still held the five loaves and, and the two fishes. But it says in verse 41, he blessed and broke. He broke. He broke the loaves. It wasn't until the loaves were broken that they began to multiply. My second principle, the breakthrough comes through the breaking. Through the breaking. It starts with gratefulness. Gratefulness is a position of the heart. We're positioning ourselves. We're giving God thanks for what's not enough. But it's in the breaking where the breakthrough and the blessings are manifested. See, God can't bring the more than enough and the breakthrough if, number one, we refuse to be grateful in what's not enough, and number two, if we refuse to be broken. Be broken. And I want you to understand that in God's economy, when He speaks of being broken, He's not speaking of destroying you and abandoning you. God's idea of, of breaking and your idea of breaking is two different things because I'm... There's probably people listening that have, that have been broken in life. God's, when God speaks of being broken, of breaking, He's not destroying you. He's not abusing you. He's speaking of pruning. He's speaking of these trying seasons, these troubling seasons that, that we have to go through that are meant to humble us. That's what the breaking is for. It's to humble us. It's to reprove us. He's speaking of these circumstances that we have to go through which are meant to drive us to our knees in humility before God. That's the purpose of the breaking. And I just want to assure you today that if God allows you to go through the breaking, 
If He allows you to go through the breaking, and if you're in, in, in the breaking right now, it's not to destroy you. It's to bless you. It's to bless you. Because it's through the breaking where breakthrough is found. Oftentimes, I found this, that oftentimes my life, my life had to fall apart until I got to the end of myself to allow God to put it back together. I'm convinced that people who've never been through a breaking season, I'm convinced if you've never gone through a breaking season, you don't know what breakthrough is all about. You don't even know what I'm talking about today. Because sometimes we have to be broken. We have to fall apart. We have to hit rock bottom. We have to have those prodigal experiences before God can put us back together again. If you've never gone through seasons of brokenness, seasons of rejection, seasons of heartache, seasons of disappointment, you don't know what breakthrough is all about. If, you, if, if everything's just been good in your world, what about things that have broken? Broken homes, broken families. I'm, and I'm not advocating for a broken home this morning. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a marriage counselor. I preach God's truth. God says, I hate divorce. So don't think I'm sitting up here, you know, trying to cover up and all that. I'm not. I still preach the whole word of God. But the fact of the matter is, there's broken homes. There's broken families. There's broken hearts. Broken hopes. Broken dreams. I've, I've experienced all of them. But here's my courage. This is what I found because, because it's oftentimes in, in those greatest seasons of breaking, I found that my greatest breakthrough has come out of those greatest seasons of breaking and brokenness. If you're in that place of despair and you're in that place of you're closer to your breakthrough than what you think. See, the breakthrough, the, the, the breaking is about driving us to our knees to where, to where all we've got is God. All we've got left is, is God. And, and God, it's you and you alone who can help me. I can't help myself. I heard somebody say that God's office is at the end of our rope. Sometimes we got to get, we got to get at the bottom of the rope, at the bottom of the barrel to, to just get in this place of humility where we quit trying to help ourselves and try to create the breakthrough for, instead just get on rock bottom. That's when God can break through for you. And some of you need to go through the breaking. You need to go through these breaking seasons. I'm convinced that the longer I pastor, this is why I'm pastoring, because I've lived in the breaking. I can preach to you from experience. I can tell you that if I came through, I know you can come through. I can, t I can tell you that from experience. Not from looking down. Okay, do check number one. Do point number two. Do this. Do, 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 do. No, I can say, honey, I empathize with you. I empathize with you. I know what you're going through. If you're going through the breaking season, don't be discouraged. It's in the breaking where breakthrough is found. Don't give up in the breaking season. Don't lose heart in the breaking season. It's not the end. God's not broken you to abandon you. In the kingdom of God, to find the blessing and the multiplication, we find multiplication in the kingdom of God through subtraction. We can't find the multiplication until we start subtracting our will, start subtracting our desires. When we lose our life, that's when the Lord blesses. That's when the Lord multiplies and it says that Jesus he broke he gave the bread he gave the loaves he gave the fishes to the, to, to the disciples he said disciples I want you to feed them here you go you feed them you feed them now I'm sure that Jesus being God knew the exact amount of people, knew the exact amount that it would take 
to fill them up. But it says in verse 43, I mean, Jesus could have been precise. You know he could have been precise. He's God. He could, have, he could have just dazzled everybody and said, I'm going to make, I'm going to produce right up to the exact point, boom, and then everything will wash out perfectly. But it says, and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fish. So Jesus didn't just give them enough. He gave them more than enough. 12 baskets full. Jesus, he was a southern cook. Southern redneck cook, don't you know in the South, you got to always have food left over. It's a sin if, you, if somebody comes to your house and you don't have enough food, right? Come on, I, I'd rather put food in the fridge than, than, to, than to run out of food. But Jesus said, he, 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 he says, I'm not going to give you just enough, I'm giving you more than enough. One of the names of God is El Shaddai. God Almighty, the God who is more than enough. Scholars say that the 12 baskets were left over for each of his disciples as a lesson, as a symbolic lesson of faith. Here's the leftover. I'm more than enough for you. I'm more than enough for you. He's doing this to teach them a lesson. You carry that. When, when, when you get to thinking that you're not enough, you look to the basket. You serve the God who's more than enough. You serve El Shaddai. And I like that. I tend, to, I tend to agree with that. That every disciple, this is, you, you serve God Almighty. Here's your reminder right here. Here's, you remember this. You remember this. So right there is usually where the story ends. And, and I'll be honest, that's usually where I've ended it in the past. But I noticed in verse 45 that it said immediately... He made his disciples get into the boat. So, it, it's, so he, does, he does this. And when it says immediately, it means it's just a continual flow, right? That's how the story reads. And, this is a, and, I've, and I've just seemed to overlook this because the story doesn't end with the loaves and the fishes. Look what it says, and you'll probably recognize this story. It says, and immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. He sends them in a boat immediately. Get your baskets, <laughs> get in the boat, go across. I'm going to deal with the crowd, and then I'm going to pray. Now, they didn't know it. See, Jesus, he's still, he's, still, he's still in the mindset. He's still the teacher. He's still teaching them. They didn't know it, but... He's, he knows it, but he's about to send them into a storm. He says, get into the boat. Go to the other side. He knows that there's a storm about to come. This is where the lesson is continuing. See, the devil will have you think that if you're going through the storm, it's because God's bringing judgment upon you. That it's something that you've done. If you're in the breaking, God must be punishing you. God must be judging you in the storm. But this is proof and point right here that sometimes we, don't, we, we, we go into the storm through divine instruction. And they're getting ready to face the storm. They're following God. They're following His orders. So they get into the boat. To, and, and you know that the storm came. This is the story of Jesus walking on the water. The, the storm is raging. Jesus is, is walking on the water to them. And look at verse 49. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost. And cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Now remember, they've just, the, they just, they just seen the miracle. They've just experienced the miraculous power of Jesus. I, I don't know how long it was later. A couple hours, three, I don't know. But just in, this, in that span of time, they go from seeing the miracle and seeing the breakthrough and the blessing, and now they're freaking out and they're, and they're panicking. Look at verse 41. 51, I'm sorry. Then he went up into the boat. And the wind ceased. And they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled. And I want you to look at this next verse because this, this popped to me this week. For they had not understood the loaves because their heart was hardened. 
You think about that. Their heart is hardened. Some synonyms in the Greek lexicon says calloused. Their heart was calloused. Their heart was insensible. They saw the miracle. Remember, they saw the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. They saw the blessing. They saw the breaking, yet their heart was calloused, hardened, insensible because of their lack of faith. Because they didn't understand. And here's my third and my final point. The breakthrough requires guarding your heart from becoming hardened. See, in the breaking and in the storm, the storm will either produce in you The breaking will either produce in you a soft heart that God can take and mold or it can produce in you a hard, calloused heart. And unfortunately, that's the case. The breaking, the the storm can either draw you closer to God. Unfortunately, though, I've seen it push people away. Why? Why? Because their hearts are hardened. Jesus could have walked by. He could have easily walked by. They didn't recognize him until he got up into the boat. You would think that they would realize, this is Jesus. This is Jesus. You know, that things would start clicking. He could have walked on by. And they would have missed him because of their calloused hearts. Because of their hard hearts. It was only his grace that he got into the boat and said, don't worry, don't fear. And maybe you're in here today. You've been crying out for breakthrough. You're wondering where Jesus is. (laughs) You're wondering, where's my breakthrough? Where's Where's my blessing? All along, Jesus has been blessing your socks off. Where where's my blessing? Well, it's not enough. It's not enough. All along, the, the miraculous are taking place every day of your life. It, it's, it's, like, it's like Jesus is doing circles around you, but because your heart is hardened and calloused, you can't see him because all you can see is the storm. All you can see is the breaking. All you can see is the not enough. And Jesus, he's just like, do, 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 do. any day now, any day now, I'm here, I'm here. But our hearts are hardened. And we fail to see the blessing that is all around us. Because we don't understand. You know, if you really think about it, all of you who have been crying out, breakthrough, 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 please give breakthrough, breakthrough. You don't, you don't realize that God's been breaking through for you this whole time. You just can't see the breakthrough. You've missed your breakthrough. Because you, your heart's hardened. Calloused. I can see Jesus getting into the boat and he sees the, he sees the baskets of bread. <laughs> just pointing to the baskets of bread. I don't know if this is true, by the way. Okay, so don't, but I just, I just see, because you know the disciples, if immediately they got their, ba- immediately get into the boat and go, to, and go to the other side, you know they got their baskets of bread. I can see him pointing to those baskets. Say, don't, you, don't you understand? I gave you those baskets. To remind you of who I am. I gave you those baskets to remind you that when I send you into the storm, I'm going to be with you. Remember the baskets? But unfortunately, as far as we know, their hearts remained hardened. Because if you continue to read the stories and the interaction between the disciples and Jesus, it seems like he's spending his... (laughs) His whole ministry trying to persuade the disciples, trying to, oh, ye of little faith, oh, ye little faith. Let me fast forward just to wind it down. Fast forward to Mark chapter 14. Jesus takes his disciples. He goes to the house of Simon the leper. And there was a woman there named Mary Magdalene. 
at the house of Simon the leper. Mary Magdalene, if you know this story, she takes her alabaster box filled with expensive perfume and she broke it, didn't she? She broke it. She anointed the head of Jesus Christ. The disciples are still hardened, aren't they? Because the disciples are, are why, why is she doing, look at the, all this money, she's wasted all this, but, but, Jesus, but Jesus is saying, look, she's blessed. She's anointing me. She's anointing me for what's about to take place. Mary Magdalene understood brokenness. Mary Magdalene understood the blessing that comes through the breaking. Go to the end of that chapter. Because as far as we know, they leave the house. Disciples still hardened. The disciples still wondering, still questioning. Mark chapter 14, verse 22. Jesus takes them to an upper room. This is the night before he's crucified. And he says this, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. He blessed and broke it. Mark chapter 6, He took what was not enough. He blessed, broke it. It says, Jesus took bread, he blessed and broke it. He gave it to them, and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken. Other translations say, which is broken for you. This is what's so amazing about our Savior, is because our Savior has never asked us to do anything that he didn't do himself. He's not putting us through the breaking and say, okay, do your thing. What this is an example of is Jesus sees the hardened hearts of the disciples and he says, since they don't understand what the breaking is all about, you know what, I'm just going to break myself on their behalf. I'll break myself. Because doesn't the Bible say that, that, he, that, G, that, that Jesus, he will laid down his life no man broke Jesus he willingly laid down his life he willingly became broken you know the story they, they, they break him they, 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 they beat him they whip him they torture him they rip his beard out he's, he's broken he's broken and, and remember he's doing he's, he's allowing this to happen He's saying, I'm, I'm going to show them what, what being broken is all about. I'm going to show them the benefits of, of brokenness, but Jesus just goes to another level. Instead of going through some little troubling season, Jesus literally kills himself, basically. He destroys himself. And as he's on that cross, broken, he, he cries out, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. It is finished. It is finished. They take his broken body. They take his broken body and they put it in that borrowed tomb. But Sunday was breakthrough morning. Sunday was breakthrough morning. Because that which was broken became mended. And that broken body of Jesus was put back together again. And Jesus broke through the tomb. Amen? Amen. And through his brokenness, the Bible says that he humbled himself even to the point of death, even death on the cross. And because he, he, he humbled himself that low, God has highly exalted him. God has given him the name that is above every name. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And I promise you, Jesus will never be broken again. And here's the point. Here's the point. That's our hope. That's the hope for those who are being broken right now. Because you don't have to try to put yourself back together. You just have to be willing to be broken. You just have to be willing to go through the process. You just have to be willing to humble yourself. It's not your job to break yourself through. It's not your job to fix yourself. Jesus has already done that through the cross and the resurrection. And I don't know what you're going through this morning. 
I don't know what storm you're in. I don't know the brokenness that you're, you're facing. But I know Isaiah 53, 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. We are made whole. We are mended. We are restored. Do you know that while Jesus was being broken and, and on the cross, Jesus saw your brokenness? He had you in mind. While he was being broken himself, he's like, I'm doing this for them. I'm doing this for them. I'm doing this for them. Oh, if, if they would just trust in me. Oh, if, if they would quit fighting the battles on the... Oh, if they would just trust, I'm, I'm going to make a way for them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them together. Uh, oh, if they would just appropriate my blood and just trust in the stripes that, that, that I'm taking on their behalf. And I pray that you would receive the breakthrough of Jesus Christ today because ultimately that's it. That's it. Be grateful. Be grateful for the little things that you've got. Be willing to go through the breaking. It's t I'm telling you, it's tough. It's, it's, it seems like it takes forever. <laughs> One day seems like it's 20 years. I'm telling you, it seems like time slows down. But, but I'm telling just, just keep rejoicing. You're in the place of God's breakthrough. You've got a Savior who, who's not pointed, said go through it. No, He's got a Savior. You've got a Savior. He's already went through it before you. Amen. And He'll bring you through. Would you bow your heads? And I want to start by giving you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He's your Savior. Maybe you've never truly, truly accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've just gone through the motions like the song says. But today's the day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Get it right. Get right with God today. Get right. You're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised the next hour. Get today, right now, right now. Don't you leave this place. Don't you leave this place without knowing that you know that you know that heaven's your home. I've, I've gave you the word of a loving heavenly father who's broke through. Don't, don't, let that, don't let the work of the cross go in vain. He did it for you. Just accept it. Just receive it. Right where you're seated. Just ask him, say, Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you shed your blood for me. You are broken for me. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me. Ask him to save you right where you're at. Ask to save me, Lord. I can't save myself. Father, I ask, say, Father, I, I, I ask Jesus to be the Lord. I follow Jesus. And Lord, I just pray now in Jesus' name that those who have prayed and, and have called upon your name that you would confirm it in their lives that you would encourage them Father in Jesus name let them know that they are a child of God and Father I pray Lord that for every single person that's seated in here today listening online whatever season of life they're in I pray that you would just encourage them today encourage them let them know that they are not alone there's a cross there's an empty tomb that proves we have breakthrough. And that's where our hope lies. That's where our hope.